But what students can do to help advocate for these, for these migrants coming in, or these refugees as I call them, because the country is, is, uh, has a homicide rate higher than any, any war in the country, in the world. Uh, so what can we do, and I get this question a lot, what can we do as U.S. citizens, as people that are very aware of the situation? What's the moral thing to do? Well, what I tell people to do and what I do when I come to the States, meet your local, local representatives, uh, meet with them. They, they are, uh, you are their boss, you've elected them, you have the right to talk to them about, about how this is working, and, and get them to sign these bills. I mean, we're only going to make this uh, immigration reform work if the system is there and these congressmen understand what's going on. So advocate, meet with your local senators, meet with your local representatives and continue to do it. Knock on the door, knock on the door. Every time I'm back in the States, uh, I meet with my local senators, I meet with uh, local congressmen, I've testified in front of Congress in Washington, D.C. And I think we're finally starting to make things aware of, of what the situation is in Honduras and the rest of Central America. The challenge we have with the politicians here is that this is a war not taking place in the United States. People don't see what I'm describing. Uh, so the best thing we can do is share these stories, educate our local congressmen, our local senators, and tell these stories uh, that I'm telling you right now. I think that's the best way to do it. Uh, put a human face onto the stories. So some of the, uh, some of the funding issues on advocacy again, uh, like you just asked me, some of the funding issues and how you can support some of these funds so these programs continue. Uh, the three presidents of El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala have come up with a proposal presented to Obama, what they're calling the Alliance for Prosperity. It's a billion dollar initiative that will help support the programs that I just described. 20% of it will go for uh, anti-corruption, uh, building the capacity of the local law enforcement, which is definitely important. We don't provide a lot of that support. But the other 80% will be for development assistance on the ground in Honduras, Mexico, El Salvador, and Guatemala, supporting these youth at risk, uh, making, enforcing uh, that some of these agricultural programs thrive. You know, a, a big problem we're having now is this climate change. More and more of the rains um, are, are not as long as they used to be, and we're, getting, we're seeing drought much more. So a lot of the crops are dying off. So we're trying to support the farmers and in the promotion of diversifying their crops. So they're not only monocrop dependent, where once that crop dies, their income is lost. So, so all of these programs with the youth at risk, with the workforce development, education, uh, this is part of this Alliance for Prosperity billion dollar uh, uh, award. So what you all can do is have your local congressmen, because this will only Obama, the Obama administration is looking at this and we're expecting that it's going to be presented in front of Congress any month. What you can do is talk about this and have your local congressman support this idea because we do need funding to support this. Uh, this is a way of securing our borders even though it's not physically in the United States. This is probably the best way. It's the cheapest way to do it and tell your congressman that this is, this is key in terms of you know, stopping the drug trade and keeping our borders secure. So, so the Food for Education program that we're implementing in Honduras is funded by the Department of Agriculture. It's targeting the, the poorest state in Honduras, which is the Department of Intibuca on the border of El Salvador. Uh, the program focuses on every single school in the entire state, which is about 1,050 schools. We're targeting 55,000 children, um, and we're providing a, a school feeding program as an incentive to uh, get in, back into the schools. So the, the objective of the program is to increase the quality of education, but also bring in increase the school attendance. So we have a number of activities. One of the most popular activities besides the school feeding program, because many of these kids are lucky enough if they eat one meal a day, is the transportation. Many of these schools are very far from the communities. You have kids walking four or five miles to and from school. Um, obviously this poses a risk for the girls. So what this transportation Pro activity has done is it increased the enrollment overall, 90% in the schools, and it's increased school girls' attendance by over 100%. So this program works. Uh, we we talk about this all the time with the local Ministry of Education. The Minister of Education in Honduras loves it. The President of Honduras has visited this program. He loves it. They would like to model this program in the entire country, 
And so again, funding like this, this is an $18 million program. It doesn't sound, uh, it sounds expensive, but it's really a drop in the bucket considering the amount of money that we spend on maintenance of the wall in California, Arizona, and Texas. I think we spend over a billion dollars a year just for the maintenance. So we're talking about an $18 million program that provides support to 55,000 kids. We can replicate this if we have the money. We can replicate it tomorrow. So why, why should someone care in the United States if it's not directly affecting them? Uh, this goes back to what I was talking about. You cannot see uh, the war going on that's happening in Honduras and the rest of Central America. I think we as U.S. citizens have a moral obligation to support these people. The U.S. is, is a melting pot. There was the potato famine in Ireland. We supported the Irish. There was problems all over Europe during World War II. We supported them. This is close to our border, and we have the right to support these people. The, the drug trade is not for consumption in Central America. The drugs are coming to the United States. So the demand is very huge, and I think we, we as U.S. citizens have instigated this problem to a point, and I think it's our moral obligation to try to fix it. The drugs, 90% of the drugs that are coming into Honduras come from uh, Colombia and Venezuela. 95% of them are going to the United States. Why are they going to the United States? We're purchasing them. So if we can do something, so, so a lot of this war, a lot of the gang activity, the narco trade is because of the U.S. demand for cocaine and marijuana and the other pills that are coming in from, from Central America. So uh, you ask me, why, why should we care? Well, we, we're part of this problem. We're part of the war, and we have great resources. We're a powerful nation that can easily put an end to this. So a big misconception that I'm hearing is that these Central Americans, these Mexicans, are coming to steal my job. Well, first of all, no one wants to leave home. And the reality on the ground is that they're leaving to save their life, or they're leaving to save their children's life. Uh, they will probably be killed um, if they stay in their countries, and that's the reality. Uh, they're not taking this dangerous 20-day trek, risking their life to take someone's job. They're, t they're, they're trying to make their, their, their countries and their families better off. They're trying to save lives. So I guess the biggest misconception that I'm hearing uh, is that these, these Hondurans are coming in and, and stealing my work. They're doing jobs that Americans wouldn't take. They're working extremely hard for a reason. They're working to save the lives of their family members. Uh, they're working to save the lives of their colleagues uh, in the countries where they come from. And that really is the reality, and there's no other myth around that. I think sharing this information, the reality on the ground, and defunking these, debunking these myths are extremely important. And I think that, that by us understanding what's going on and being able to share these stories is extremely important. Uh, putting a human face on these stories is also very important.